Hi, this is Tobias, DL3 MHT, with another one hit wonder uh, 10 minute uncut video. So let's set the timer, egg timer to 10 minutes. And today we are talking about um, my experience with the DigiSpark AT Tiny 85 and an alternative, the Pimoroni um, Tiny 2040, which is a Raspberry Pi Pico variant. So, first, let's look at the AT Tiny 85, a small ABR microcontroller that has been around for years. And as you know, I used it to build a small CW Kia using the source code for the AT Tiny 85 CW Kia project. And I just massaged it a bit um, to fit the Digi Spark, um, rearranged um, the use of the GPIO pins, and basically spent most of the time working around the limitations of uh, the DigiSpark kit. Um, the idea of this project was to basically um, be able to build this without an extra ABR programmer. So therefore I chose the DigiSpark. You can just connect it to your computer and load the software and afterwards um, you can connect the peripherals and you have a nice uh, CW key and it's still working. As you can see, um, power consumption is much better than I initially thought, at least in a deep sleep mode. So with two AA batteries, um, it was running for over a month and that is even with the little green LED status LED permanently on. So if I remove that LED, I think it uh, should be good enough also for portable use and um, yeah, one battery can get you quite far, I think, uh, one set of batteries. So um, yeah, as you can see, AT Tiny 85, very tiny AVR microcontroller, um, voltage supply between 1.8 and 5.5 volt, has eight kilobyte flash, uh, CPU can run up to 20 MIPS, uh, DMIPS uh, here in the CW configuration. I think it only runs at one megahertz, if I remember correctly. 512 bytes of EEPROM for um, yeah, storing persistent settings, also 512 bytes of SRAM, two 8-bit timers, four ADC channels, one comparator, 10-bit ADC resolution and one I2C. But as this is a um, device with eight pins, um, yeah, ground and uh, the power supply rail <laughs> are <laughs> removed. So you have six pins left and they are shared, um, well, for all the different uh, peripherals. So you have to decide what you want to really do with this thing. And the DigiSpark is also a bit uh, special because it has uh, this built-in um, bootloader which emulates in software the USB uh, stack which allows you basically to uh, load software via USB without an extra programmer. And so you basically need two Two of the available GPIO pins for USB, USB plus, USB minus, and then there's the status LED here when we, you see here the uh, red status LED is also connected. Um, so basically you have to find a use for that GPIO pin that it doesn't uh, harm when you have that extra LED on there. Yeah, so what can I say? Uh, in hindsight, that was maybe not the best choice for a CW Kia. Price on eBay today on 14th of uh, July 2023 is 5.25 euro, including shipping. Um, what can I say? Yeah, if, if you have already uh, software for it, um, it's, it's an okay choice, but um, due to the dual use of GPIO pins also for USB, it can be quite tricky to have enough spare pins to implement the functionality you want. So this was definitely putting it a bit on the edge. And in hindsight, I should have probably chosen a different controller and maybe a different software, but it's working, um, serves its purpose, five euro 25. However, um, it's the year 2023 and you can get a Raspberry Pi Pico, um, without VLAN interface uh, for about 4 euro 10 for example at uh, Vilectron 
uh, without shipping. So okay, maybe a few euros uh, shipping on top. And the Raspberry Pi Pico W with the VLAN interface uh, costs around 6 euro 90. This board here that I've picked here as a competitor basically um, is a Pimo Roni Tiny 2040. Uh, has no VLAN interface but it has a 8 megabyte flash chip and <coughs> as you can see from the pin out uh, much 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 more powerful than the AT Tiny 85. So um, the RP2040 chip spec is, it runs from 1.8 to 3.3 volt. So you might need a level shifter if you have any 5 volt devices. It has a dual core Cortex M0 Plus that runs up to 133 megahertz, 264 kilobyte SRAM. The flash is off chip. So this Pumoroni has eight megabyte flash. I'm not exactly sure, but I think the standard Raspberry Pi Pico only has two megabyte flash. And then you can see here on the pin out, you have <coughs> two full UARTs um, to connect peripherals to. Here it says uh, from the data sheet, it has two uh, full SPI ports, so you can connect uh, SPI displays to it. It says it has two I square C, though it looks like it's, it has even four I square C. I'm not sure if that is a bug here or I mis misread the diagram. 16 PWMs, <coughs> eight programmable, programmable IO pins, and it has a USB 1.1 physical host and device support interface built in. What does that mean for you? Um, it basically means there's hardware on board to do the USB and that um, makes it easier from the software to uh, control the USB because you don't have to like bit bang every pin like here in the AT Tiny. Um, from a development point of view you have a C or C++ SDK. You can also use a <coughs> micro Python environment and I also saw something mentioned uh, TensorFlow Lite. So if you want to do some experiments with mesh machine learning or so, maybe that is uh, something to try. And if I remember correctly, there even is a Rust interface, uh, a Rust um, implementation. Um, you might need a second uh, Raspberry Pi Pico to connect uh, via the UART as a <laughs> debug console then. I'm not sure if the Rust uh, implementation can be debugged via USB. Anyway, as you can already see this um, for a very comparable price, uh, 5.25 euro compared to, let's say you go with the Raspberry Pi Pico, 4.10 euro, you get a much, 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 much more powerful device with much more peripherals, much more I.O. pins. And um, if you go for the standard Raspberry Pi Pico, it has, I think, a form factor like the Arduino Nano. So there are even more GPI opens to access. So my recommendation would be in the year 2023, pick something a bit more modern than the bare bone mini minimum AT Tiny. Um, it's perfectly fine if you have a very, very small project and basically only need one GPIO pin and the source code is already available somewhere. But if you do something completely new from scratch, Maybe um, it's a good idea to choose something more modern. So let me maybe so quickly zoom in here um, to show it in more detail before our um, 10 minutes run out. Let me see if that works. Yeah, and as you can see here, you have a, um, a reset button, a boot select button, and in the middle there's a uh, RGB LED, I think it's connected to three, uh, three PWM outputs, so you basically can, well, uh, display any color you want, blink it in any color with any intensity, fade up and down, so a nice status LED. So, um, if I remember correctly, also Manuel and Guido, um, authors of the True SDX, are experimenting with a RP2040 uh, based version um, 
for the next uh, true SDX variant. And I think um, if you get the chip alone, so just the little black buck here, it's really dirt cheap. I think uh, 99 cent or so just for the for the chip. And of course you need um, a little bit of peripherals then. You need the RAM, you need maybe the oscillator. But yeah, I think that's a good choice in the year 2023. There are other boards out there. You can go with the standard Raspberry Pi Pi Pico or the Pico W that has the WLAN interface. Or I think Seed Studio also has a very similar variant here of the RP2040. Um, yeah, so let's see what I will do with this. Um, at the moment, I have no idea. I just was curious and ordered it when I got my um, chunky toroids for the NFET half wave experiment. And I thought, okay, let's uh, get one of those as well to play around with. Um, yeah, maybe uh, leave a comment below if you want to see some more info about this one. Um, as an alternative, I also have a, a Lattice FPGA board um, somewhere here and we can look at a, F, at a FPGA board and how the development workflow works for a FPGA board. I'm not an expert, so I will just make it up as I go along as usual. Um, yeah, let me know what you want to see. Our 10 minutes are already up. Um, so until next time and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.